So the first trip we made was August 5th of 2020. And I had an interest in looking over Norfolk Southern operations. Uh, so we decided we started Shenandoah Junction. And if you look in the top left-hand corner, you can see information on the train designations, if we had it, where it was taken. Um, and this therefore is the DPU on Q135 uh, with the Norfolk Southern Bridge in the background. And we spent some time here and I'll show you why in a minute. Um, and here's the GPU again going away. And then we had an auto train Q16 coming at us. And he's switching from track two to track one. And that's why they were doing thermite welding on track one. And <clears throat> What you see here is the uh, container in which they dump uh, alumina, AL203, and iron, no, aluminum, I'm sorry, and iron oxide, hit it with a torch, the aluminum converts to aluminum oxide, the iron becomes, the iron oxide becomes iron and makes the weld. And there's the weld afterwards um where they removed everything and they're getting ready to clean it up we then moved north uh stopping at chippensburg because jim had learned that there would be a coal train eventually with the lehigh valley unit trailing as dpu oops sorry and there is the coal train and we'll get some going away shots in a minute. Um, I will tell you that I didn't include every photograph we took on any of these trips for obvious reasons. Um, <coughs> Morgansville proved to be very active for us that day. Um, here we have a northbound intermodal uh, or eastbound in railroad terminology. Uh, oops, I keep hitting the wrong button, I'm sorry. And uh, this is a westbound intermodal at Morgansville. And uh, you can see there's another intrepid rail fan right there. So these, these photographs are now taken at Morgansville. And here's the first shot. And, they, and, and I forgot they actually had two uh, heritage units on the rear end. Then we went to the south end of, um, of uh, the yard in, um, in Hagerstown. Uh, and 4122 is leaving with the coal train. And our last shot of that trip was of the coal train DPUs departing. On August 18th, we were at it again, another same intrepid rail fan over here. Um, I had wanted to shoot at Hershey, east of the plant, um, former plant, now not there. Uh, because I had forgotten, frankly, how much I had been able to do in the past on film. It turns out I had probably done a fair amount, but Hershey has changed a lot in the last years. Um, <clears throat> while we were there, uh, a local backed out uh, with a caboose, no less, obviously, and went on its way. Uh, and then we got our, an eastbound rack train. The, the silos here used to have a uh, conveyor across the tracks into the plant. The plant used to be over here. Uh, I think it's a golf course now or something. I can't remember. Um, but anyhow, these are the shots we got at Hershey. And 
the rest of the day wasn't that productive until we got to Lebanon. Uh, and there are two bridges in Re Lebanon that are very new. We're standing on one and it's for northbound traffic and the, tra the bridge for eastbound is in the shot. Um, <clears throat> this is an eastbound uh, stack train. We also got a westbound manifest coming past the station and then through town. I, I kind of really am intrigued by the, um, by the towers here that carry the electric. And I also like these old buildings that run along the track here. And that there used to be more, like two blocks more, but this is about all that's left because of the bridge construction. Okay, moving forward to September 23rd, 2020. Uh, Jim and I are now up on the Maryland Midland. These are four SD40s in SD45 car bodies. I mean, there aren't too many places where you can shoot four SD45 car bodies on a train today. And we're in Thurmond, West Virginia. And then climbing the grade up to uh, Blue Ridge Summit. And we explored back behind the elementary school, I think it is, uh, on the grade up to Sibyllisville. And this is a very, very, very nice location buried in the back there. <clears throat> Same train, it's gone maybe 100 feet or so. When we were up in, um, in Highfield, the, um, the, I guess it's the Gettysburg local came through. They would go right through town on, at this time uh, and do their work here on the way back. They had already left their cars for the uh, Maryland Midland, uh, maybe a half a mile west of here. And now the Maryland Midland's going down to get their cars. Actually, they've already gotten their cars and they're coming back. And they are on CSX. They also back down where you saw those hoppers with the, um, with the uh, CSX local. And they're going to back down and grab those cars too. And if I'm going too fast, let me know. If I'm going too slow, you can let me know that too. Um, <clears throat> the local had this rebuilt SD40, uh, which became the leader going west back to Hagerstown. I kind of like mailbox shots, so I was very pleased to get this. And I also don't have much coverage on these uh, rebuilt SD40s. Uh, some, ref some rail fans call them SpongeBob, SpongeBob's and there are GP40 variants of this too. Moving back east, um, there's a cemetery in Thermont. Uh, that, that's where we uh, pulled in to get this picture. And then obviously at Grayson. Um, <laughs> in Detour, there was a gentleman who had parked his, I think, 1949 Chevy. Is that right, Jim? Oh, I think so. His 1949. Yeah, yeah I believe it is. I looked okay. it up because I showed somebody this photo uh, last week while we were away. Okay, so. Looks like a Pete Laro special here. Yeah. <laughs> but with 2021 wheels. <laughs> wait, wait, wait till you see the tractor. You got that one? <laughs> yeah, I got it. it it's coming up. Anyhow, uh, he had parked this. The only thing he did wrong is he didn't park it. So the, the nose would have been facing us. But he was really nice. We got to talk to him a little bit. And um, 
the 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 truck is in just beautiful condition. Okay, moving further along on October fifteenth, back again. Um, this time we've gone down a farm road uh, off of the Chase Road, uh, which is just up from the from the school. And the local had already gone through and was coming back. It's time with only two units. And I don't remember, maybe Jim does, I don't remember where the rear two units came from, but there they were. Uh, and we just about beat them back here uh, at Lance. And again at the cemetery in Thermont. Therm Thermont. And there's the tractor. This time he placed it right by the road for us that Jim was mentioning. And I think, I can't remember how old that is, but it ain't new. On October 21st, 2020, the chapter had a, a get together at the Gaithersburg station. <clears throat> and um, here are a few pictures from that. And there's the cap. Okay, this is October 28th. I forgot to make a date slide. And I can't remember, I think Rudy was with me on this one. Are you still there, Rudy? All right. Anyhow, this is at, at Gaithersburg, taken from the parking structure. And the parking structure is really a pretty, pretty nifty place to shoot from. For those of us who have lived around here a long time, it is absolutely amazing how much Gaithersburg has grown up. November 4th. Uh, <clears throat> I joined Jim for a day of rail fanning <clears throat> in the Baltimore area. First stop was the Canton. Uh, I was really intrigued at getting or interested in getting their new locomotive made by Knoxville Locomotive Works. Uh, it was, we had information from Tyler Hunter at the railroad as to where they'd be working. It was very easy to find them. Um, and I really liked the paint scheme. Uh, I took another railroad later in the program. It has a very similar paint scheme. But anyhow, here, here are pictures on the Canton Railroad. This is, these are taken from Boston Street, I think. Is that right? Okay, I think it is. Yes, that's from Boston Street. Okay. Then they went and they uh, worked a, a warehouse, um, giving us another opportunity. In that past frame, what were those, that object looked like mountains? Well, not that one, um, let me see. There, what, um, <laughs> what is that? I salt. think, I think it's coal. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right. I, th I think that's salt, Bob. Oh, salt, you think it's yeah. salt? From okay. The Rucker, yeah, from the Rucker okay. Terminal, salt storage area. Okay, makes sense. Okay, so from here, we went over to, um, oh, I can't remember the name. What's Trade the name of this? Trade Point Atlantic. Trade Point. Trade, po Trade Point, Point Atlantic, Point. right. Point, that's what I said, Trade Point Atlantic. Um, they had a job working, and I guess he was just about done for the day, but we managed to get a couple of shots. Now he's parked. 
I read recently that they go to work about seven o'clock and they're done about 10 or 10.30. So after that, uh, we went up to um, the airport, Martin State Airport, and we just hung out for a while and shot whatever came along. And that included the only time I think I've ever seen double-headed MP50, MP36s and this uh, NS local, which had locomotives on either end. And by the way, the foliage wasn't near as good as it looks. Uh, it took a little manipulation in, in Photoshop or in uh, Lightroom. And he went all the way up to, um, to uh, Perryville and then came back and he's pushing here. Back at the Canton, November 20th, because it was rumored that they were going to go down to the dock and pick up a car down to the waterfront, which they did. And so that got us, got me some images and everybody else who was there. I think Steve Barry was there at that time. Uh, some images with ship with a ship in the background. On December 15th, we took another shot at the Maryland Midland. And this was just a comedy of errors. <clears throat> I really wanted to get this shot and was very glad to. Um, it's uh, just, just uh, east of New Windsor. <clears throat> and the reason that there's a second unit in the center is they're going to work a, uh, an industry, a lumber, an industry that receives the lumber loads that you see here at a trailing point switch. And so what had to happen was the Maryland Midland blue and orange unit would pull off and he could just push them in and then get back on the train and they'd go together. So anyhow, that gave us plenty of time to get around and we went to a place called Oh, there's another shot, sorry. To Avondale. Now, I'd shot at Avondale a number of times. I was looking for something new. And so I decided to try for something that was a little different. And I got two focal lengths there. And then he beat us to, um, to Westminster, which we really didn't expect. And we sat at Westminster for a while waiting for him and then decided to go on to uh, Emery Grove where we found him almost done working. And uh, we got our sandwiches there. At, I don't remember the name of the place. Jim, you can, you remember. Santoni's. Santoni's, right. And then we went back to Emory Grove, uh, to uh, Westminster to eat and wait for him. And we waited and we waited and we waited. And what we didn't know is while we were getting our sandwiches, he returned to Union Bridge. And I think he was engine light that day, wasn't he? Didn't he? He didn't have a train going back to Union Bridge, did he? I don't remember seeing him, so I don't know. Okay, I, saw, I thought we ran into somebody who said that. I don't remember. Okay, but anyhow, the important thing was we missed him. And uh, we didn't know where he was, where he was going. We know he had already gotten back to Union Bridge. And so we just called it a day. Is this the only Maryland Midland painted locomotive? Yes, it is a heritage okay. unit. Okay, great. How did the Maryland Midland get its name? I don't know. It's been the Maryland Midland ever since they took over the, the old Penzi route between Walkersville and 
Oh, shoot. Tar at Tarny Town at the moment. Tarny Town, yeah. right. Thank you. I Wasn't that the Ma and Pa? No, the Ma and Pa ran north out of there to, um, to York. Oh, OK. But um, this is the old Western Maryland main line, so that's probably uh, got something to do with they used to have the uh, speed lettering. Well, and and some of their uh, locomotives. The the Western Maryland Main Line takeover occurred after they took over the line between Tawny Town and Walkersville. That's where this started. Yeah. And <clears throat> I can't remember how long it was after, but it was not just weeks or months. It was like a few years after. And there was a gap between Tawny Town and I forget the name of the town north of there that didn't have any, any rail. It had rail maybe, but there was no, there was no operation on it. And the um, York Rail or Maryland and Pennsylvania came down that far. So anyhow, January 7th, 2021 and Jim really would wanted to go down on the Winchester and Western, and I hadn't been there for a long time, so we did. And here you have <clears throat> 2813 on a local, and 5527 probably on the, the power for the train that came down from uh, Brunswick. And we spent a fair period of time looking for this guy before we finally found him. And here he's getting ready. Now here he's on his, already on his way uh, to um, the sand mine. The nickname for the train, by the way, is the sand man. And I really like this location. So you're going to see three different images. Didn't need to use his refrigerator to keep his drinking water cold that day. Um, I don't remember it being terribly cold. It's like some street running there. Um, it's not really street running. It's like uh, um, Ashland, Virginia. You know, the, 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 it's ballasted. Cars can't go where the train is. Okay. What's okay. the sand used for? It's, I think it's glass sand. You understand what I said? Yes. Okay. It, glass sand is silica and it's the main ingredient in glass. And it was it was an easy chase. You know, he didn't he didn't go all that fast. We had lots of opportunities. And we, we did follow him all the way out to the end of the line, but we I didn't include all of those photos. But he's getting close here in Gore. February 25th, we went up to uh, the East Penn Railroad. Ran into Rich John here, which was very enjoyable. And again, the chase was not difficult. Um, this is, by the way, I should tell you, this is a very nice operation. Uh, all of the power looks pristine. The people are friendly. If you go in the office and you ask, where's the train? They'll tell you everything that you need to know as they know it. You'll never hear, oh, we can't share that with you. 9-11 security, you know.
Is this the road that runs uh, north of Philly from like Lansdale to Quakertown or is that a different one? No, this is a different one. It runs uh, from Willsmere Yard in uh, Wilmington up to uh, Coatesville, Pennsylvania. And then they have a line that goes west from, I'm not gonna remember the name of this town. Chad, Chad's Ford. Right, thank you. Chad's Ford to Oxford. Yes. That, that's the end of the line, right? Mm -hmm. Oxford. And, and this train is on the line from Chad's Ford to Oxford. But on this day, it actually left from um, Kennett Square. All right, thanks. You're welcome. And they actually did do some switching um, in Oxford. And Jim and I had shot them switching at the chip plant there previously, so I didn't, we didn't go any further with it. On the way home, we stopped at Harvard of Grace. March 10th. And we're back on the Hagerstown line again, uh, this time south of Hagerstown. This is a place I really like. It's called Fair Play. Um, there are a lot of different possible angles here and different focal length shots. Here are two of them. We then went up to uh, Morganville, north of Hagerstown. I had never shot these grain elevators. <clears throat> and the people there are very friendly. Um, one of the guys came out, was, was mowing the lawn and talked to us for a while. <clears throat> and he had a, a calendar that they had produced using the photography of uh, Randy Anderson. Randy Anderson was and may still be a Potomac chapter member, lives in Hagerstown. Excellent modeler. He was mowing the lawn in early March. Okay, maybe he wasn't mowing the lawn. You're right. <laughs> but maybe he came out in his truck. He, you know, I'm lucky I can remember what I had for breakfast this morning. Uh. <laughs> and these, these are, they're not in station order. They're just, you know, somewhat in the order I took them. And a local was working in Morgansville. We went back and shot that. Um, it had an SD40 on either end. And we got it again at Minor, Pennsylvania. That's where the, the uh, Greenville Intermodal Yard is located. And um, I think that's reopened now. And if you go up on the bridge, you can get this shot. Here we have a uh, stack train coming south and the local working back here. Our next foray was up on the uh, York Rail after Spending a few minutes searching, we found <coughs> the local city job working, and we got a few shots of that. And this was kind of a challenge because of the traffic. And then we went to the end of the west end of the yard there, and uh, just as we got there, the job that was going to um, uh, 
porters. Well, it went beyond porters. Didn't it go yes, into he, 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 Go ahead. They, I think they interchange at uh, Smith Station, but yeah, I think this day they went into uh, Hanover. Hanover, that's right. He went into Hanover. Yeah. Anyhow, and Jim said to me, well, would you rather keep working the local job or chase the road job? And it took us, took me 10 seconds. And I said, road job. So uh, the good news is that Jim knew where he was going. And these are some of the images we got. That line service the potato chip factories in Hanover? <laughs> um, I don't know the answer, but I would doubt it. OK. And we lost him after Porter Sidling. Um, we went into Hanover and, and we didn't find any decent shots on the way in and we couldn't find out where he was going in Hanover. So we eventually came back out to Porter's, um, I'm sorry, to Smith Station. And that's where he picked up his train to go back to, um, to uh, York. And I, I we got a few more pictures, but I didn't, didn't include them. April 7th was a visit to the former RFMP. And Leesylvania State Park uh, now offers opportunities to photograph crossing the bridge here at Powell, I think it's Powell's Creek. Uh, and we got a, a number of trains here all passenger. We did not see a lot of freight. This is a northbound um, and it's taken from the property of a marina on the down river side of the bridge uh, with permission. Oh, and there was a um, osprey nest in here. Then we moved on down to Fredericksburg. Second mainline freight. We also got a local there, but I didn't include that. And then we, we finished the day at Aquia. Um, we had to make a decision and uh, one of the trains we were waiting for at Aquia was sufficiently late that we didn't think we could make it up to Napsco in time, so we didn't. So the rest of these shots are all at Aquia. Again, with permission. But there are lots of angles, lots of places to move around. And I love the name of the boat, just give it away. April 18th was the beginning of a long, well, I won't say long, multi-night trip. Uh, I believe this was a Sunday and we didn't get an early start because there was no good reason. Um, and we followed the mountain sub out to um, Grafton. Didn't see anything, didn't hear anything till we got to Grafton. And when we got to Grafton, uh, we heard Q16 going east and we gave chase. Uh, the shot that I got was the going away with helpers. Um, we had a number of objectives and one of them was this nice light green foliage. And the second objective was the Belle Pre Industrial Parkersburg Railroad. And this is a really interesting, neat railroad. The next day, we had, 
we had understood they got went on duty at 6 a.m., usually got out. I'm sorry, went on duty earlier and usually got out maybe at 6 a.m. So we were ready to go at 6 a.m. and couldn't find them. Couldn't find them, couldn't find them, looked and looked and looked. Finally decided to head north. We knew where, where, they, where they were going, which was up along the Ohio, uh, the Ohio River and the Muskingum River. Um, and finally, we found them about four or five miles from their destination. And the destination is this facility here that produces uh, ferroalloys like ferrosilicon and ferromanganese, uh, which are used by the steel industry for alloying steel. Um, you know, they'd be like something like 50-50 iron silicon or something like that, or 50-50 iron manganese. And here we see them working the plant on the 19th. And this, this factory building, which was certainly not in operation as a factory building, was really intriguing. The, the tall stack and the shape of the facade here. So it got photographed a couple of times. The second thing we were after on this trip, well, besides the Bell Prey Industrial, was the, um, the foliage. And although I know it's not the same, I'm, I'm certainly reminded of the Canton Railroad's paint scheme by the Bell Prey Industrial one. And we got a lot of nice foliage. That alloy factory, could it be served by trucks or would it have to be served by railroad? Well, the answer to your question is certainly it can be served by trucks and indeed it was. Um, but they brought in coal and I don't think that's a good way to, to bring in coal. I don't know if they took product out that way or not. How many trains a day does this operate past that location, do you know? Yeah, they were supposedly operating uh, Monday and Thursday. Okay, so those folks in that house just have to stay awake all the time, all night, unless it's daytime running only. Okay. It's, day, it's daytime running only. Um, on this particular day, they operated, this particular week, they operated Tuesday and Friday. Oh, they operate, I'm sorry, they operated Monday and Friday. They didn't operate on Thursday. No, it's a daytime operation. And by the time they get up here, you should be up anyhow. Okay. So now we're following the train southbound. And like I said, we got a lot of this nice light green foliage and we got some really nice pictures with, um, with uh, flowering trees like this dogwood and that one. And we'll just follow them on south and I'll make a few comments here and there. He stopped the switch here in Oak Grove. I can't remember, I think there was a plastics plant here. I'm pretty sure there was. And we just photographed them coming in and then we, we left to get some more distance on them. That ditch light burned out or is it blinking? Yes, it's burned out. Um, so all these nice yellow flowers were gone within 30 seconds after this picture was taken. The gentleman in the tractor had a sort of a rake, plow, whatever it was behind him. And he just went right down there and took them out. I have no idea why. And the train's getting ready to spot that covered hopper. But anyhow, we, we left because we wanted to make sure that we got down to Marietta in time to find a good location for the street running. And this is real street running. 
Not much of that left. Oh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> Have you ever been to LaGrange, in, um, Kentucky? No, I haven't. <laughs> lot, lot, a, lot there. CSX main line goes right through town. Four or five blocks of street running. And there are... I got a photograph of a uh, New York Central Hudson uh, on a passenger train going through Syracuse, New York, and street running decades ago. <laughs> yeah, many, many decades. That'd be neat. Um, there's also street running in uh, West Brownsville, Pennsylvania, on what was once the Monongahela. I, I'm. I think there are other places I just can't remember. And then they crossed the Ohio into West Virginia, all the other pictures, as you may have noticed, were taken in Ohio on this mammoth bridge. And you'll see more pictures of the bridge in a little bit. In the afternoon, they went out uh, west of town on the old B&O um, St. Louis line. And they go about four miles, five miles out there and work a huge concentration of two or three factories. And I, I should say at this point, all of this trackage is former b &O. And then late in the afternoon, they go down to what's known as the lower yard to interchange with CSX. And they have leased from CSX the yard they use here, known as the upper yard. <clears throat> and what you have over here is a dike. And this is CSX. We'll see more of that in a bit. OK, so the next day, it was obvious to us that nothing was going to happen until, if anything, much later in the day, and there was no reason to stick around. Um, so, quick consultation, and we headed to Sand Patch. Um, here we have a westbound coming through Sand Patch on track two. And then an eastbound stack train, actually Q138. We then went down to Mance. This train. And he had a DPU on him. We then went down to Heinemann and we had photographed 3219 earlier. And I think he was the train ahead of the train we shot at Heinemann. And somehow or other, he came in behind the train we shot at Heinemann. But anyhow, I mean at, uh, at Mass, sorry. Here we are at Heinemann. And we went back up to Fairhope and got our last few shots at Fairhope. Oops, sorry, wrong, wrong key. The next day, dawn cloudy, cold, yucky, with drizzle occasionally. Uh, we went west out to Garrett and sat and waited watching the signals and eventually this eastbound showed up. So we went, we raced literally back to, um, to uh, Salisbury Viaduct and walked out on the viaduct for this. <clears throat> that was all we shot. We only shot one train that day. However, on Thursday, we um, 
we decided to spend some time on the line that comes down the Ohio River. And we actually, we, I guess we had some information that there would be a coal train. So we went out and got it. And here's some more street running. Easy deliveries for food giant. Yep. And by the way, I haven't moved to take these shots in case you're wondering, these two. So we chased them south to, uh, to uh, Parkersburg. And this is almost street running. I mean, it's just, you know, it's cars that can go up either side here. Then we got down into Parkersburg and we found this park where we could kind of hang out and see what went on. And after a while, the coal train continued on its way. That's the last, this is the last time we saw him. But this gives you a good overview of what happens here. This is the track into the lower yard. This is the connection that the B, BP, BIP uses to get to their upper yard. <clears throat> and um, I'm trying to think. We did catch this guy coming into town. Uh, oh, I remember. He, he went out so early that morning that he was coming back into town at eight o'clock or something like that in the morning. And so we, we just got into position. There's a better shot, which I'll see, show you in a minute or two. Uh, but we got him coming across the Ohio River Bridge. And again, we shot the uh, transfer in the afternoon. Mike is now on. Telephone. Good luck. Finally, on Friday, we got up really early. When we didn't see him in town, we talked to... Uh, somebody who worked for the railroad, we found at a grade crossing. And he said, oh, he left about 20 minutes ago. And we knew that he usually worked this Orion uh, engineering, whatever, carbon or something like that. Yeah, that's what it is. So that's only about four or five miles from Parkersburg. We hustled on up there and we started shooting at about 6.15 in the morning while he worked the plant. Was that carbon black in those tank cars or do you know? I'm pretty sure it was. Oh, not in the tank cars, in the hoppers. Remember, he's got a train here that's going to other places. So I think this is carbon black. Yeah, that would be correct. I've, I've seen other carbon black cars uh... Oh, since I grew up in Akron, Ohio, I've seen cars like that for carbon black. Thank you. By now it's getting close to seven, 6.45 or something like that. We mm -hmm. decided to head north and find another spot. And this, this structure was kind of intriguing. So we set up here. And then we went on up to um, Marietta for a second street running shot. In Ohio, it's a long way to go. And like I said, that building with that smokestack was most intriguing. There are hardly any of those left. Yeah. And one more shot of the plant with a slightly different view. 
Oh, two more shots. Sorry about that. And look, the same smokestack. And I mean, there's just so many nice places to go. And, and you know, we didn't do any walking. We didn't do any, anything special. The chase roads were easy. And now we're back in Marietta. Marietta is what state? Ohio. Okay. Almost everything here on the BIP is in Ohio. You know, the transfer is not, but, and the, the shots coming across the bridge are in, in West Virginia. And here he's coming across the bridge. And that gives you some idea of what the bridge is like. This is taken from a parking structure. And that's the end. Thank you.